Jennifer, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you, all that I am I give to you, and all that I have I share with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Firstly, I'd like to say Thanks to Kevin Suzanne. From the first day I met you, you've really made me feel like a part of the family, for which I can't thank you enough. I'd also like to thank you for raising such a beautiful, kind and caring daughter. It doesn't take long in your company to realise where she gets it all from. Jennifer and I first met after contrasting nights out in Doncaster. We ended up uh, meeting at the high-class eatery known as Kebabies. Uh, we chatted, but unfortunately, leaning against the wall and pouting didn't quite seal the deal. I did manage to find out where she worked, and being young and naive, I thought, surely that many people can't work in a museum, so... The Monday after our meeting, I sent an email out to who I thought was Jen, but uh, alas, I was mistaken. This, uh, this email actually went to her boss, who who unfortunately couldn't be here today, but I managed to track her down and she's contributed the following. Dear Matt, I had to smile when I opened your email. I had seen Jennifer at a conference in Hull not too long ago, so I was aware that you were getting married in September. I'm delighted for both of you. I vividly remember receiving your first email to me. Something to lie in the boredom of hundreds of council communications. <laughs> You asked if I was a girl you had met in the takeaway in Doncaster. <laughs> the, the one who looked like Katy Perry and worked at a museum in Scunthorpe. I had to think really hard about which member of the team would fit that description. For the record, I think Jen is much prettier than Katy Perry. I wasn't sure that Jen would even remember meeting you, but I was so impressed that you had... <laughs> But I was so impressed that you had tried really hard to track it down that I thought you deserved a chance. I can't tell you how delighted I am that you are getting married. I feel th thrilled to think that I've played even a small part in you getting together. I wish you a future filled with love and laughter, and I will be raising a glass to you both on the 16th. I call upon these persons to witness that I, Jennifer Anna Dunn, do take thee, Matthew Edward Craig, to be my lawful wedded husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better for worse, for richer for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. that you put into planning today and of course for turning up <laughs> today definitely couldn't have happened without you and secondly to tell you how beautiful you look today i've never met anyone as kind caring and as selfless as you i feel incredibly lucky to be your husband and i look forward to many more years of happiness together so for the last time tonight, if I could ask you to raise your glasses to my beautiful new wife. To Jennifer.
Jennifer, when I saw you for the first time today in your dress, you were even more stunning than I could have imagined. It's a moment I'll treasure forever, and um, walking you down the aisle, I was proud as I've always been anyway. And you look beautiful. Anyway, we hope that Jen and Matthew enjoy a long and healthy and happy marriage together, like both sets of um, parents and grandparents, and um, we wish you all the best for the future. Uh, if you'd like to be upstanding, please, as I propose a toast to the new Mr. and Mrs. Craig. Jennifer and Matthew. is not love which alters when its alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. Star to every wandering bark, whose worth unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lip and cheeks with his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with the, his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out, even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved.